fourth order of the day. Um, to lend my voice to this very important bill. And um, Mr. Speaker, sir, I must thank the mover, the author of this bill, for bringing this bill to amend the Police Act, and um, especially to take care of the continued infraction of Section 42 of the Constitution that speaks to discrimination against any persons. Mr. Speaker, sir, even though the mover of the uh, bill has spoken very eloquently to the issues, especially with regards to seeking permission before a woman seeks, um, can get married within the police force. Mr. Speaker, let me make the point that in 2012, this same matter had come before the Federal High Court Justice Ada, and, and Justice Ada in his ruling ruled it as unconstitutional, this, uh, this particular provision. It had already come before the Court of Law and it had been ruled as unconstitutional and because it was in contravention of the provisions of the Constitution that to that end, that that um, part of the Act was null and void. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, we're all aware that the courts are not in the business of making laws and so it has fallen on this House of Representatives and indeed the lawmaking body of this country to enact it into law and to that end I'd like to thank the mover of this bill. But Mr. Speaker, sir, even though he speaks to that issue, I'd like to also state, and Mr. Speaker, before you ask me who said it, I don't have the details, but I shall furnish the House with the details, that the Nigerian police is the most discriminatory organ of government in Nigeria. And Mr. Speaker, I shall buttress these claims that I make, which may appear to be spurious, with certain other sections of the police regulations that do not only speak to marriage. For instance, Mr. Speaker, sir, the police regulation states that women must put W before their names. So every police officer who is a woman must have the prefix of W so that before you even see her, you know that she's a woman. Mr. Speaker, it says that compensation, gratuity, disability pensions, and provisions are only made for wives and not for husbands. Mr. Speaker, sir, police women married to civilians are not allowed to live in the police barracks. Mr. Speaker, travel allowance made is only made for accompanying wives and not for accompanying husbands of these women who have already sought permission to get married. Mr. Speaker, Section 121 of the police regulation says women officers shall, as a general rule, be employed only on duties that are concerned with women and children. So today, when we have female uh, engineers, aeronautical engineers, pilots, no female pilot can be employed by the Nigerian police because she's not going to be taking care of women and children. Mr. Speaker, sir, of course, these days, we realize that the biological clock of women and the progressive clock of women are in absolute conflict. And so you find that a lot of women in pursuing a career don't have the time to have children. And so you find that when a lot of women get to a certain age, the need to have children, of course, is a legitimate need. And a lot of women, of course, either too, back in the day, people thought that women who had children out of wedlock were loose. But now, of course, we know that women can have children even through artificial insemination. So it's the moral angle of that is put to bed. Yes. But Mr. Speaker, Section 122 of the police, of the police um, regulation states that a married policewoman who is married may be granted maternity leave in accordance with the provisions of general order. However, an unmarried policewoman who is pregnant shall be discharged. Mr. Speaker, I believe that as we look at this regulation, that for us to have a police that is truly inclusive, Mr. Speaker, I would ask my dear colleague that as he looks at Section 42, amending the Police Act in such laws of our abilities should please be looked into. I so submit. Thank you.